me. So I just want you to show that to me. Start on the left. You're going to do the lengthen down the long side, shorten before the corner. And then do a small circle. So stay inside these barrels. And then same thing, into the corner, lengthen the long side, shorten before the end, and circle inside those jumps. Make sure, Leo, you, there's no twists in your reins, right? We want that straight line. Nice, nice transition. I like how you're carrying your hands. So we need a bigger length than next long side. There are any sticks around? Better find a stick. I think I feel like I need to jack my stirrups up like this. Oh my gosh, Shanae. There we go. Much better. So before the end, start to stretch up. Feel your saddle. Half halt. Good with your left bend. So we still want her to get shorter in her strides. And remember, you're supposed to be inside the barrel. So you need to start your circle earlier in the corner to stay inside the barrel. Good, better, Leo. Turn, turn, turn. Inside the barrel. Good. So your next circle is going to happen in the corner inside the barrel, okay? So it starts and ends in the corner. Good lengthen. Super lengthen. Yes. Now, there we go. Beautiful. Keeping some uphill energy without lengthening her stride. Good. Let's come across the diagonal. Simple change through walk. So you're going to go canter, walk, canter where you can. Whoops. Turn left. Pick up your canter again. So you've got to keep the canter as you leave the wall. Keep the canter into the walk. Why don't you plan to turn in front of me? We've got a clear path here on the short diagonal. Okay, so canter, walk, 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 walk. What's, that's not walk at all. Yes, we are, turn left. Simple change through walk. We could do it through halt as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be through trot. Right, a simple change is just where you do a downward transition and then pick up the new lead. So usually we do it through the trot, now we're doing it through walk. Walk, no posting, walking. Right bend, and good Leo. Let's do another one of those just to practice the timing of that. So when you're doing a transition to walk, there should be no posting steps. So Leo, you needed to communicate something there, right? Left bend. Good. Good, two more of those. I wanna see you keep a little more feel on your inside rein when you ask for the canter. So you're helping keep her shape to the new direction, the new bend. No posting, better. Keep a feel, press her off the right side. Beautiful transition, Leo. Now start to plan where you can make your next diagonal, because it could be anywhere you can find space. Yes. I'm not going to jump, but my might fall over. Walk, tighten your abs. Good. Really good, Leo. Okay, let's just give her a short walk break here while I set up a warm-up jump. Good, Leo. So that's something you can add to your warm-up routine, right? Or mix into your warm-up routine is the simple change through the walk. Okay, Leo, we're going to start on the left lead canter. 
You're gonna go just around the cross rail. So you've only got a little gap to make that turn. Just around the cross rail, cantering in, counting to the pole, right? And then it's just pull, jump, pull. So these are just bounces. <coughs> okay. Perfect. Counting rhythm. Good. Okay, so you made a good decision. You shortened to the pull, which was fine. Well done. Now here, your eyes need to be up on the wall, okay? As soon as you know where you are in relation to the jump, and as soon as you've stepped over the pole, you know that you're jumping, right? When you know that you're jumping, your eyes need to come up. Okay, so good, same ride, rhythm count. I just wanna see you shift your eyes up as soon as you've gotten to the pull, right? You've gotta you've got look to the pull while you're counting to help yourself know where her footfalls are going. We want her feet to be just in front of the pole. Now look up, good. Now just walk a sec, Leo. Now, Ren admitted to something at the show, which I thought was great. He said that without the vests on, he felt really kind of naked and weird, like he didn't know, like it was like, ah, without the vest. But what he said is that he's used to leaning into the vest, okay? And I just mentioned it, because what happened there over the jump is while she was jumping, your back got really round, okay? So you need to be tight here when you're jumping, right? Hands forward. The reason that our back is flat when we're jumping is because we're using our abs properly, right? It's really hard to use your abs when you're like this, right? So over the pull, your eyes were good. Now we need to make sure you're looking at keeping your back flat, okay? Let's do that again. Yes, beautifully done, Leo. Beautifully done. There you look like you could be in an equitation class. Good, okay, walk a sec. We're gonna get ready to come the other way. Okay, so now we're coming off the right. And again, you're turning through the gap between those two jumps, okay? So she needs to know where you're going. So we've got the rhythm count to the pole. The eyes come up when you get to the pole. When your eyes come up, you're gonna look through the gap between those two jumps. Good. So keep that good rhythm. Coming right away again, make sure you have a beat that's staying consistent, no faltered rhythm. Beautiful. Good, one more, Leo. Okay, so we're gonna do another one because we had a bit of an off distance there. Right, counting to the pull, you needed to make a decision. Okay, it's coming up awkwardly. Am I gonna wait or am I gonna press forward? Perfect, perfect. Okay, and walk.
Okay, so now we're gonna do our same first jump off the right, and then you're doing a bending line to the white cross rail, and then a bending line to the green box jump. So these are set to be four strides and four strides, okay? But we're gonna need a little more canter than we've had so far to do four and four. Otherwise we're gonna get there on four and a half. So I think what we might plan to do the first time is to do five. Okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna keep your canter a little bit quiet and short and jump in and wait two, three, four, five. And then same thing on the next line, wait for five. And then when we do that well, then we'll put the jumps up a little bit more and we'll do the four. Okay? So the five canter is just a little bit quiet. Don't have to go crazy because the jumps aren't that big, right? If the jumps were bigger, your five canter would have to be even shorter. Okay, you got it? So you're doing like an S, kind of. <laughs> you're doing a snake, right? Jump, 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 five and five. We're just doing the wiggle to the green box there. So we're doing the, the three jumps on the curve here. Oh, I see. Yeah. Be riding outside soon, eh? Yeah. No, we just need a couple more dry days. We're very close. The weather's been beautiful. Nice, Leo. This is the right kind of counter. Now support and count. Wait, two, three, four, five. Wait, two, three, four, five. Good, okay. Good, so what did we need more of in the second bending line? More of a beat? Yeah, I like that answer. Yeah, needed to be a little more regular, right? Because she landed a little quick. And then also this line is set up a little bit on a tricky track, but you need a little more curve in your line early so that you meet that. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, if you think about your math, right? So you've got your jumps like this. If you go like this, it's gonna be a lot longer distance than if you draw a straight line middle middle right so we call that like a as the crow flies right as the crow flies straight you would be more likely to do four strides if you go out and do the bend you're gonna get the five okay so let's do the five one more time make sure you're counting ideally we have a little bit quieter jump in there to help keep things more regular Eyes up. Good, better idea, good. So just a little bit overdone, but the right idea. We need to make sure in that five that as you're pushing her out, her strides aren't getting bigger, right? Like you've got to be pushing her out while you're half halting. Just like think a leg yield, right? You've got your half halt working while you push her out. Okay, good, one more time in five. I think we're getting better and better. Again, remember as you get to your jumps, your eyes need to look up at the next thing. Good. What a beautiful ride, Leo. Awesome job. 
Now we, we had the help of the poop induced half halt that time, but your track was also beautiful there. Okay, good. So now just to mess things up, we're gonna do four and four, which is gonna require a little more canter and a little straighter track. What we don't want in here is more canter and a totally straight track, right? That would be too much. You just get to go a little more direct and on a bit bigger step, and that'll give you the nice four. Okay, so we're gonna come off the right and do four and four. So a little bolder canter beat, right? A little longer canter step. And then in this one, you probably don't need to change your track very much. You just need to make sure your canter's big enough. And then off that bigger canter, you're probably gonna find a straighter track anyways. Do you know what I mean? Because you had to work hard to get the out track. So if you get this done nicely in the four, the other track is gonna be right there. Okay. So make sure you're committed to doing four and four with your eyes coming up as you're getting to your jumps. Okay, so nicely done in the second part, Leo. So to begin with, we just didn't have enough canter, right? It wasn't a big enough change, which is why you still got five in here. Okay, so pick it up right from now, and as soon as you say canter, it needs to be whoom, big canter, right? We are marching down the line in four right off the get-go here. Big canter. So Leo, you picked up your canter over here, and I didn't see you get into the right kind of canter until you were about here, right? That's too long, right? This is not enough time to set the canter you want for this jump. If you set it back at F, that would have worked, right? One, two, one, two, you're already on that here, and this follows out of the canter you're already in. Okay, so I want you to do that again. So, yeah, just pick up your reins, and once you say canter, it needs to be whoom, big canter. Do more than you need to. Get it. Three, two, one. Go, two, three, four. So I'm not seeing enough killer instinct in here. Right, you're kind of waiting to see what's gonna happen. Go get it, go get it, right? Get the four, land with your outside leg on hard, right, vroom, get there, you can get it, no problem, but you need to make it happen a little bit here, right? So set the right canter, have that determination, that competitiveness, you know, David O'Connor talked about that in his clinic, that we need to ride with some competitiveness, some fire in our bellies. Good. Super, good job, Leo. Okay, praise her and walk. Good. Start on the right up at this end. You're jumping the box. You're doing your same line again, okay? Then you're gonna jump the oxer, coming towards me, just to make sure if that's set okay, yep. So you're doing four and four, start with enough canter, four and four, and then the oxer, and then let's jump this jump, and then go straight down the line in five strides. I'll just make this a vertical. So make sure your determination level is up. 
You've got the right canter, you've got a response to going forward. Right? And then you're counting and being determined that you're getting four. Okay, how many down this line? Six. Five. Okay, probably couldn't even tell. That's going to be a long one. Did you hardly look at the sound when I was writing? I didn't know it. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So you're going to need your leg on and your eyes up here, right? Because she hasn't jumped it yet, and there's some eye candy under the oxer. I'm keeping Chase off the streets. <laughs> Leo, where on earth are you going? Well, why didn't you turn right? She does lead changes. Come on, go on the right. She does lead changes now, okay? So maybe six months ago that would have been a good excuse. Necessary. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes. Good. Now rhythm first, track second, and determination. Good man. Balance. Right bend, right bend. Come on, you need to set her up here. Oh. Halt. 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 Pulley rein. Halt. Use a pulley rein. Please tell me you know what a pulley rein is. Ah, crap. So what would you do if you were in 400 acres and she was bolting with you? <laughs> I do one hand on one side if you know what that means. Pulley rein. That's a pulley rein. There you go. No, there you that's, go. That's it's what we different. Need. I wanted you to halt at the wall, right? Two, rein, two hands one side is not a pulley rein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Show her, oh, show her, Leo. It's where Drop you one side. Just, yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, no. Well, you can't do that if they're bolting, right? Because yeah. you'll flip them over. Um, you can do that if they're like rude and heavy and you just need to like make them humble for a second. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so pulley rein is, let me just grab your reins for a sec. Let's see if I can bring her here. Let's see if we can both be the rider here. Can you see us, Jane? Uh, you're on this side. Okay, so pulley rein is like an emergency braking system. Okay, so here's your two reins. You can't stop. One hand plants down. The other hand is going to come straight back into your chest. Okay, so what this hand does is it allows you to brace your body, right? You can push your weight into this hand. And then the other hand pulls straight to your chest. If it's done properly, the horse should stop absolutely straight. Shouldn't turn her head. Okay, so you go, and we do usually the outside rein, if you're in a ring, the outside rein is usually the pullback rein, because that way if there is any turn of the head, you're turning into the wall. Okay. So we needed to fix the problem earlier, right? So she was on the wrong lead, not a big problem, but she was so far counter bent, she wasn't looking where she was going, she's going faster and faster and faster, we never got an appropriate canter to come into this line. And then not only should you probably not have jumped in, but then you started counting here, <laughs> right? It's like, oh, whoops, I probably should have been counting back there, right? Like you want to be counting eight, at least eight strides before your jump, okay? So the four and the four were good. The oxer was good. The problem was we didn't get a lead change and we didn't have any inside bend to help her balance through the turn. Okay, so let's start with the oxer. 
need to land, bend, right? Your inside leg pushing her out to the wall, your inside rein, making sure she's looking where she's going. Okay. And then how many strides are we doing down here? Five. Okay, so she did four and a swim, right? And if, you're, if our horses ever swim, we're going to halt and back them up. It's not acceptable. It sh they shouldn't know how. It shouldn't be part of their world, okay? Because it's so dangerous. So they're swimming when they're on their forehand fast and out of balance. We're going to halt and back them up into balance again. And then canter on in better balance and try again with more control. So we have to watch for the little girl on the pony, right? She's a novice, so make sure that you're not jumping right towards her. So Leah, we're starting with the axer. So we're gonna start with the axer, so we have time to work on this end of the ring and setting her up to jump the line. So I want you to circle once, just so we're not gonna bump into the pony. Good, now a little stronger canter. Remember, you're gonna be halfway through your course at this point. That's right, look at your jump. Track, one, two, one, two, one, two. Good, Good with your eyes. Right bend, work your right bend. Rhythm, rhythm. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Good. And halt. Don't look back for your rail. Halt. Look up. Halt. So when I say halt here, you should not go past the wall, okay? There is no turn option. The wall is the end of the line. If, if you're doing your pulley rein, if you have to. I mean, hopefully you don't have to. Hopefully you can just halt normally. But if you can't, and you're doing your pulley rein, like the wall is the final half fold, right? That's it. You're in position. There's the wall. What's she going to do? You're telling her to stop. She will stop. Don't let her make the turn. Okay, this was much, much better. And then because she was a little careless with her balance and got the rail here, I just wanted you to halt. So that's the same concept we were talking about with the swim jump is that if she's out of balance on her forehand, we use the halt to help rebalance. Yes. Now she knocked down the oxer because you sat up too early. Okay, you didn't really hold your two point there. Your eyes were good, but you started to sit up in the air and when we sit up in the air, it drops the horse's butt down. Okay, so much better overall. Now let's jump our line in five and then show me the halt. Just to make sure we have that before we're complicating everything here. Uh, she's just doing the line right where you are actually. Just move up a touch. No worries. Shanae, we're just going to sneak over the line there if you can move up just a bit. Thank you. So we're planning the halt after the line. One, two, three, four, five, and halt. Halt, halt, halt. Sorry, Nicole. Good, okay, so I'm really glad that you stuck to the plan. You did not let her turn, right? And even though she wiggled, if you look back at your jump, you actually ended up pretty darn straight. Okay, let's go ahead and do that one more time. Oh, we got her thinking now, good. One more time, the line in five and the halt, Leo, and then we're gonna put our whole course back together again. 
Make sure she's looking where she's going. Good, and halt. Good, and very good in your position there. Now give her a pat. Good, and walk forward. Good, okay, so we'll give her a second to think about that. Okay, we're gonna do our course one more time now. So the four and the four, the oxer, the five, which just like you did last time, you'll need to be half halting a little bit for the nice five. And then if she's good and she lands nicely here, let's just circle at the end. If she's at all strong or if she catches the rail down the line, then we're gonna plan to halt again. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Look, be determined. Good, Leo. Now rhythm and track. Wait. Right bend, work, work, work. Balanced around your right leg. I like your approach. Weight two, three, four, five. What happened to the weight? So Leo, remember we had said at the beginning that this line at the end of your course, you're gonna have to keep half halting in here, okay? And instead of half halting, you actually push her a little bit. Right? So yes, you need your leg on, but you need your leg on into your half halt, right? So if you think about five strides, it should be land, wait, two, three, four, five half halts before you release. Okay? Good. Let's do the oxer in our last line again. The oxer was okay. She was good, but the only problem was that your canter's getting a little bigger and a little bigger all the way here. Okay? This up a bit. Okay, so start with a good canter, rhythm to the oxer, and then five half halts down that last line. Yep. Just try them, Nicole. Oh, she was good to you. Now bend right, work the right side. Good here. Five regular strides. Wait, come on, you need to pull on both reins, Leo. Especially if you don't like your jump in, right? So she jumped in big and flat. So that means you have to get her all back underneath you again as soon as possible, like right away, <laughs> right? If you jump in big and flat and you go, ah, oh, crap, and you keep your hands out in front of you, you're just letting the snowball roll down the hill, <laughs> right? You need to scoop all that snow back up, get it underneath you again. Okay, start here. You don't need so much speed coming at this oxer. Rhythm, regular rhythm. Good, keep waiting. Okay, we're gonna start again, Leo. Start again, Leo, from the oxer. Your canter rhythm needs to be established before you make your turn. So if it's slow, fast, or fast, slow, it doesn't work. 
Good. Now this is your canter. Now, 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 now. That's your beat. Now, 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 now. Perfect. And what a great jump. Now right bend. Five half halts down your line. Yes. Beautiful, okay? So there you're acting like a rider and not just sitting there like a bump on a log. Right? It's very important. She will happily do four and a half and swim over. It's not safe. And she's not going to keep the jump up once it gets to any height, right? When you ride like you did here, this, did you feel that oxer? Right? She jumped up and across. She landed for the first time on her right lead. And that's because you, you rode the best canter you've had to the oxer. Quality canter means quality jump. So you had a quality canter, you had a great jump here. It made your right bend a little bit easier. You still had to work for it, right? But it was a little bit easier because she was already on the correct lead. And then you were determined and you got your five half holds and she jumps out well of the line. Really good. Good, that's good for today. Good work, please. So she can do a little bit of trotting to finish up. Okay, good. <laughs>